<laughs> I, no, no, you. Yeah, I'll have to confess, I'm, I'm a little bit distracted. I was just getting some messages that uh, uh, that the Fagradasfjall volcano in Iceland is shaking, and it might erupt. So, yeah, that's exciting for me. <laughs> <laughs> but today I'm going to talk about uh, a little island in the south coast of Iceland called Surtsey. How many of you have heard of Surtsey? I'm just curious. Yeah, quite, quite many. And, uh, and it's an island that formed in a volcanic eruption in 1963. So it's, it's becoming 60 years old this year. And if we talk about paradigm shifts, there are a few of them that uh, we have learned and, and by observing and documenting the processes, geological processes and biological in Surtsey. So it's a very interesting place. And Surtsey, as you see here, uh, is, a, is an island south of Iceland, about uh, 30 kilometers south of Iceland, here in the Westman Island archipelago. And uh, November 15th, 1963, a fisherman saw that the ocean was bubbling and becoming dark. It must have been terrifying if you're sailing there and you, you just see that the ocean is bubbling and dark. And then suddenly they started to see the jets and the explosions and, and they knew what was happening, a volcanic eruption. And <clears throat> it lasted uh, three and a half years with, with a few pauses and ended in June, 15, no, June 5th. 1967. So the first phase was what we call submarine phreatog magmatic, when lava is interacting with water and, and fragmenting explosively and forming these explosions and, 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 and ash was piling up and forming uh, an island, a new island. And then as uh, the eruption progressed above the level of the ocean, um, it started, and, and the vent managed to somehow close, then uh, lava started to flow. And as a continuation of the eruption, uh, two half lava shields formed here on the south coast of the island. Yeah, you can see here uh, a lava shield forming here. And there were actually three other volcanic episodes in this series of events that formed uh, uh, actually two other islands. But uh, they uh, disappeared or were eroded very quickly by the ocean. And today we only have one island, and that is Circe. The, the, the two lava shields, I'll just show you here, this is a geological map. So these are the tooth cones that formed in the Freatog magmatic phase, the in which uh, ash was deposited and formed two uh, craters. And then lava flow flowed here to the south and formed two half shields. And these shields, actually, they protected the island from erosion because ash is very easy, easily erodible by water, especially if it's saturated, saturated in water, it's just, ash is just washed away. So, but the lava here protected the island those first years from uh, the ocean. And today the island looks like this. It has decreased by uh, over 50% in size due to ocean erosion. And if you take a cross section through the island, it more or less looks like this. And we call uh, this uh, shape of the, the crater that extends down here below the seafloor, we call it diatreme. And here you see the progression of the formation of the island as it started. 
and then as it grew, expanded here the lava fields to the south, and today oceanic uh, erosion, or coastal erosion is eroding the island, and it has decreased to something like this. And the reason that um, oceanic erosion, coastal erosion is so intense in this area is because Surtse is located here. Uh, this circle is in the wrong place, but Surtse is located here at the very margin of the Iceland shelf. So uh, wave erosion and wave intensity, the energy in the waves is very high in this location because the shelf kind of eats away the energy of the waves, but here at the edge, um, Surtse is is, uh, let's say, receiving the full force of, of the waves in this area that, that sometimes reach up to 16 meters, 16 meters high. And, um, <coughs> and we also have very strong wind erosion. Uh, I think there are, in average, about 30 days with winds over 20 meters per second in the area. So the ash mounds uh, weather also quite quickly. Uh, Circe, um, as soon as it formed actually in, in 63, scientists were already there documenting everything that was happening. And, uh, and in 64, when they suddenly could uh, land on the island, they, they started going there and documenting, uh, especially life, how life colonized the island. And it was interesting to see, for example, that as soon as they got there, they, they, the, uh, the, the first spring of, um, of the life time of, of Surse uh, already had plant seeds on the coast that were arriving with, uh, with the sea. And um, in, yeah, in the first years they could see plants already growing by the coast. Uh, the sea rockets, I think, is the first plant here. And in, um, yeah, colonization was pretty slow first, first years, but uh, in 85, there was a seagull invasion. <laughs> and they just took over the island, and after that, plant colonization bloomed. And today we have over 70 a number of species in terms of plants. And, and they are always spotting new birds. Here's a few, a few images of the birds there. Great black backed gull, the fulmar. The gulls, here's a gulls nest, and you see here the grasses, the flowers. Um, so colonization was very quick. Now I, um, I uh, was uh, assigned to map searching with uh, drones and. I, I go there every second year, and we create three, 3D models of, of the island that look like this. And actually, you can actually visit this website, we have the website v3geo.com, and look there for Sutse, and you can play with it and look at it and, and visit it yourself. Visit Sutse. And uh, we, we, we fly there with helicopters or or I use mostly drones, and uh, we survey the island, and we create very detailed maps and digital elevation models with high resolution. And we have also created uh, digital elevation models of the island in 1967, 1974, from vertical aerial imagery, which we can compare with the models that we are generating today. And 
from these models, for example, we can calculate very precisely the area change, which has been 63%, and the volume change, which has been 29% decrease since it formed in, or since uh, 1967. Um, and we can then differentiate these uh, models, and then we can very precisely see all the areas that have, have been lost, and, and even quantify them, calculate the loss and all the changes, both in terms of erosion and also sedimentation. That would be the blue. The erosion would be, uh, red areas would be erosion, and the blue would be sedimentation. And um, you see these are, this is a, a digital elevation model differencing between 1967 and 1974. And then we, we have here another one in between 74 and 2019. And you see then very visually how the island has decreased with time, been eroded very quickly. And how sedimentation also is rapid here on the sides, especially. And as I mentioned, we can qu measure very precisely all the volume changes of specific areas of what we are interested in looking at. And uh, interestingly, uh, this uh, give you some information on the erosion, for example. The first seven years of the island, the island was uh, fresh and, and new. The ash mounds were, were still pretty fresh. And uh, erosion amounted to about 40,500 containers, the six-meter containers, in terms of material being taken off. We are talking about... Uh, yeah, a lot of material these first seven years. Uh, erosion was very intense. And then uh, uh, the ash mounds here, they were actually undergoing alteration. There, there, there was uh, still uh, lava inside the mounds, and uh, a geothermal system was... Uh, uh, active in the island and that geothermal system altered the ash uh, in less than seven years 60% uh, of the ash here into hard rock what we call uh, hyaloclastides and uh, and that was a big surprise because before people thought that this process of alteration or palagonization of the ash the, the the conversion of the ash into, into hard rock was a process that would take thousands of years, but it took there less than seven years and to, to happen. So that was a paradigm shift for many. But uh, after the ash mounds here, they solidified. They became very resistant to erosion. And the island stabilized in terms of, at least the ashman, in terms of weathering and erosion of the, of the mounds. So uh, erosion was less following the, those next 45 years. Or we're talking about 11,000, almost 12,000 containers per year of material being removed of the island. And... Uh, and there was also mobilization in terms of sedimentation, about 200 containers a year of material being mobilized on the island. Um, so this is a bathymetry map of, of the island and, and those three islands that formed here in the same event. You see it's a, it's a fissure here, but uh, Circe is the island that is still on the surface. The other islands have been completely eroded and are today at 40 meters deep depth. Now I wanted to just show you pictures of Circe. Um, as, you, as you go there, if we did not know the age, we know the age, it's 60 years old, but if we did not know the age, what would we think? What, what would we conclude? 
you go there and we see gullies. And these gullies are, are down to 20 meters uh, deep, some of them. And there are no rivers. This is just runoff from rains that are creating these gullies. And you see that the, 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 the parts in the back, these are palagonatized, these are hardened into hard rock, these parts here. While this is the, the soft ash that has not altered, so it is uh, more easily eroded. But we see these gullies uh, all around the island. Rounded rocks. This is a process people thought, oh, it takes thousands of years for the rocks to get rounded. In a few days, the rocks get rounded. Those that break down here at the coast from the lavas, they, they are washed and polished by the, the sea. And actually, in the beginning of the eruption, when there was a lot of ash being mobilized from the ash, ash mounds, and that ash was also entrained into the ocean and used in the polishing. So, so the polishing was quick. And you, we have these boulders, uh, at least a, sp a spit there with, with, a bowl, with boulders uh, that are uh, dragged uh, from, from these southern areas where the lava field is. So rounded boulders, the rounding, the polishing, uh, took only a few days. It takes only a few days to a few weeks. Now, erosion of the ash mound, you see here, this is a dike or, or the pathway uh, uh, the lava took uh, that erupted here. This is a lava flow. So this was the original surface of the ash mound, the, 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 the cone. And you see here how much it has eroded. This is hard rock, and it has eroded about you know, three three meters here, about five meters here. So uh, we are talking about today two, three centimeters a year of erosion. And we see wind eroded potholes. And so the island, in many ways, looks like an old island. If you didn't know the age, it just looks like yeah, things we see uh, on, on, on the island, in Iceland, uh, in other places there that are much older. Uh, here we see an unconformity, angular unconformity. This, you see the, here the horizontal layers, and then you see here vertical layers, an angular unconformity. And this is just uh, when, when the ash or the craters were still unconsolidated, were still, uh, the ash was, was loose. Then uh, inside the craters, there was lots of slippering, or slip and, and slumps of, of, of ash into the crater. And that formed this uh, unconformity that is today hardened or altered. Today is just hard rock. And this is just something that formed uh, instantly, actually. We, we have erosion forms like this. This is the Sphinx of Surtsey. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's some very pretty erosion forms. And uh, ripple marks. No, that's, uh, these are actually, this, uh, 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 the, the ash mounds are layered. And the layers, they formed in what we call pyroclastic density currents. These currents, and, and as they flow down the, 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 the ash, the, in the explosions, the ashes uh, collapses under, the, under its own weight and flows down the, the, the sides of the cones. And as it flows, it's, it sorts the, the grain size of the ash and the very fine grain is thrown up and, and, and rests on top of the layer. And as it rests, it moves and forms these ripples. So, uh, and they are hardened today, and you can f find them at different levels, these ripples. Uh, well, we have volcanic bombs, and the harder parts of the bombs, they, they, 
do not erode, but the rest around them erode, and then suddenly they they fall and and and, and roll down and and uh, are collected at the base of the the cone. This is, this was a, a puzzle. In search, they, they find what we call xenoliths. These are rocks in the in the ash cones that do not belong to Circe, neither Iceland. These are rocks from Greenland. They are metamorphic granites. They are even sedimentary with fossils. And that was a problem. Where did those, how, how did they get there? They're just in the, the mounds. And a guy uh, did a study on this, and, and, and he found out that these were drift stones. They were coming with uh, icebergs. They were transported with icebergs. Coming from Greenland, transported with icebergs to Iceland, then they melt, they sink to the bottom of the ocean, and then they were picked up and entrained by the volcanic eruption to the surface. And we even have shell fossils from, from the bottom of the ocean that were entrained and are at the surface of Circe. So geology can be complex. <laughs> driftwood. I mean, we have plenty of driftwood on the shores there. In Iceland, in general, we have lots of driftwood coming from, I think, uh, Siberia. And, uh, and some of the driftwood was um, entrained at the initial stages of the formation of the island, were entrained into the, the deposits there and are today being exposed by erosion. So you see here this wood that is, just sticks out. But uh, if I knew nothing about Circe, I would say, wow, there was a forest here. Big forest, big trees. So that's interesting, Mark. But the most interesting for me is the next part. Do you know what this is? We are finding, yeah, fossilized human footprints or bootprints. And actually, we just wrote a paper on these, me and a colleague, uh, in in. Uh, in a journal dedicated for studies on Circe, Circe research, human boot tracks. And this one is uh, w what was one of the first ones that were, were uh, reported. But uh, I'll show you. They, we find them here on, on, on this side here of, of the bridge uh, in between these two cones. And this was actually uh, the walking path of most people. They, they, they would. They would walk here along the margins of the crater and then climb up the ridge here to, to get up to the top of the, the cones here. And um, we went there and I, I created, photographed these footprints and created a 3D model. And you see them here, a track. This is one track. And today we have found, we have found over uh, five tracks and over, over 40 uh, prints or boot prints, and um, we have described them. And, and uh, let me just show you this uh, track here or, or this footprint here. You see, they are, they are not well uh, preserved, but you can clearly see that these are uh, prints after uh, a human being that was walking there, and. Uh, we described them and, and kind of speculated on the shoe size and even who possibly was walking there. And we, we have a, a suggestion because we know that there was a geologist, geologist there called Sigurd Thorarinsson. He was very active there documenting uh, the island and he, the size of his foot was 42 in European size. And that matches uh, one of the tracks that we have there. 
there was but 42. And um, so that is very interesting. But uh, so the, and we have dated these boot tracks, fossilized boot tracks, to sometime in between 67 and 70 using various methods, <laughs> uh, relative methods, because um, the, yeah, we can't use radiometric dating. But, uh, but yeah, these footprints, they, you even see here, this one seems to have had some, uh, it seems like the substrate was wet, so the person could leave the tracks, and then they were buried quickly with sand, maybe in a storm, and that, that preserved the tracks, and then uh, the whole thing was altered, palagnotized, the, the tracks were hardened in that layers, in, in that layer of ash, and then today are being exhumed, eroded and exhumed at the surface. So these cycles of both burial and then alteration and then exhumation were very quick, very quick. So Surse uh, is certainly teaching us many lessons. And uh, it's always fun to go there and see the changes. They're just on a yearly basis. And, um, and I think uh, one of the lessons that we can learn is that, for example, after a catastrophic event, after the formation of new land, everything is very unstable. So changes are rapid. And then with time, things tend to stabilize and alter and harden. And then things, the erosion process is slowed down. So I think that is the lesson we can learn from, from searching. And Surtsey Island is a fascinating natural laboratory for observing geological and biological processes. And uh, this island was quickly colonized by birds and plants. Extremely rapid rates of erosion and alteration were observed. And studies in Surtsey may shed new light on the origin of geological formations in other places that have been interpreted as forming slowly and gradually. All right. So I thank you very much for your time. And have a good evening.